my biggest passion is to do everything in my power to ensure that the children of our earth have a habitable earth in which to live and to live healthy lives, to live good lives. Animal agriculture is the leading driver of climate change, which I think is the, the, the uh, environmental disaster that's most pushing me because it's so present happening now and so has such disastrous consequences and we're on a tight time frame with climate change. Um, and animal agriculture is a leading driver of that and it's also one of the top um, two or three causes of pretty much any environmental disaster you can think of, whether it's um, species extinction or deforestation, pollution of our waterways, pollution of our air, etc., etc. So um, my goal is to do whatever I can in my power to reduce um, the consumption and production of animal products um, so that we can turn around some of these really pressing environmental issues so that our children have a really beautiful earth. I believe that the earth is so worthy of great stewardship that we've been given this incredible planet on which to play and to grow and to learn, to connect and to love and that it is our responsibility to show good stewardship to this earth and, um, and I, I believe that the time is now <laughs> There's no better time than the present to really start being serious about um, whatever transformation re is required in order that we might be more responsible stewards of our earth. Like how can one person really make a big difference? When I first started um, feeling the call to do this work to make sure that our children have a habitable planet my idea was I'm gonna support as many people as possible to become vegan or to go as close to that as, as they can but what I realized after a couple of years of doing that work was that the the problem is so huge that I, I was just making the tiniest drop in the bucket in terms of impact and even if I really scaled up my business and you know really focused on the internet and reaching people that way that I really probably wasn't going to make enough of a difference. And I used to do this shtick um, when I was talking to people and I was focusing on health because when people are going to make a tremendous lifestyle change, it usually helps to have something that's pushing them instead of just like this idea that it would be a good thing to you know take care of the earth. But really when people are, are worried about their health, it's you know, then they're more willing to make big lifestyle changes. And so I do this shtick where I would say, did you know that there is one thing that is killing almost all Americans? And not only is it killing us, but it's robbing us of our vitality and our health and our energy and our fitness for the last five or 10 or 15 or 20 or more years of our lives. And not only that, but increasingly around the world as people copy our lifestyle, it's killing them and it's robbing them of their vitality as well. One thing, do you know what that one thing is? And then um, people would be leaning in and I would um, pick up a fork and I would put it toward my mouth and I would say it's what's on the end of our fork. And then I would talk about how um, it's a good thing we can make a choice about what's on the end of our fork and I would give a presentation about the connection between animal products and ill health. But what I got really um, interested in changing was the factors that put that same toxic food on the end of almost everybody's forks. Like it would be one thing if it, w if it was an aberration and only a few people were killing themselves by what they were choosing to eat. But there are greater forces at play that are putting that same food on people's forks, that are making that the easiest and the most expeditious, um, the most obvious choice. Melody Joy calls it um, the mo that um, eating meat is seen as natural, normal, and necessary. And someone's added nice. And in, in our culture, that is. Most people think it's just the natural, normal, necessary thing to do. But there's reasons why it seems natural, normal, and necessary. And so I started thinking about how can I make an impact on those reasons? Instead of supporting people to change one at a time, how could I make it easier, more natural, more expeditious to eat more plants and less animal products? And I landed on this idea, which is kind of the epitome of think globally and act locally, because I decided that in my county, Santa Cruz County, um, I'm 
I'm starting to build a movement, create a team that can, that can do a number of projects locally that do two things. The first thing is that all of these projects need to make it easier for people to eat more plants and less animal products, or at least more plants, right? So the products need to make it easier so if somebody chooses to do the right thing by their body, by the earth, by the animals, by our spiritual integrity, it'll be easier for them, them to make that choice. They won't feel like they're swimming upstream against a current that's pressing them toward the standard American diet. Each of these projects will somehow influence one of the institutions that's currently reinforcing the standard American diet as the status quo. So that would be pretty much any of the major institutions and many of the minor institutions in our culture. So education and the justice and law enforcement and um, government and churches and corporations, et cetera, et cetera. These major institutions that for the most part you know, I don't think consciously, but more unconsciously, the media, you know, like the Thanksgiving is coming, right? It's not now, but Thanksgiving was recently. And so the media is full of, you know, how do you cook the turkey? Like just kind of the stamp of approval that this is what you do at Thanksgiving is you eat a bird, you know? So like how can the media instead make it seem as normal and natural to eat vegetables and fruits, you know, and gra whole grains and legumes and nuts and seeds? And so, so while we're doing these projects locally, starting with um, a, an initiative called Green Monday Santa Cruz, which will get the local government to institute a program where one day a week, any food they, they serve is gonna be plant-based. And there's other aspects of it. So that's the first one we're coming out with. But while we're doing these projects locally, remember I said think globally and act locally, I'm also documenting everything I'm doing and creating um, worksheets and lists, um, tip sheets, things like that, so that I can be a resource, so that our community can be a resource to other communities worldwide. And I'm already in contact with people in four different um, places in California who are very interested in this work. So I feel like a grassroots movement like this can really have a big impact as um, each community starts to make it more natural and normal for people to eat more plants and less animal products.